Hi guys, so a while ago I made this looping animation where you have a moisturizer changing into a dropper in like a smooth way and a lot of people were asking me how I did this morph and what kind of add-on or modifier I used to make this morph and I was a little bit surprised because honestly I didn't use any modifier at all, it's just pure animation and some clever keyframing. And today I'm going to show you how we can do a morph like this and you don't need any add-ons, no modifiers and you can kind of do this in any Blender version available. So let's jump into it. All right, so let's first find two objects we want to morph between. And for this one, I'm going to CG Trader because there's a lot of nice free models here. So you just have to search for, let's do a skateboard and let's click on free here. And let's choose a model like this, click free download and download the model. And for the other model, I chose a gaming mouse because it would be an interesting challenge to morph a skateboard into a computer mouse. So let's download this too. So now let's open Blender and let's add the files. Make sure you also download the textures because you sometimes have to download that separately. All right, so here we have the mouse. I think that looks good. Let's grab this, go into a new Blender file. Let's save this as morph transitions and let's open the skateboard here let's do the same let's copy this and bring it into our file let's have two collections let's have one for mouse one for the skateboard all right so let's start with the mouse let's first open the graph editor here because we will use this to work on our animation and let's also add a camera let's move this out a bit let's make this square maybe and I like to have a view of the camera in this viewport and then I work on the animation in this viewport. And in the graph editor, before we add any keyframes, let's enable normalize. This will basically make all the keyframes be between 0 and 1, which it won't change the animation itself, it just makes it a little bit easier to work with keyframes here, because they won't be spread out. So let's start by placing the origin point in the center of the mouse. And this is because if you try to rotate it now, it will not rotate around the center, it will rotate around the bottom. So go into object, set origin, and let's choose origin to center of mass. Nice. Let's place it in the center, I think this is good. Let's add a keyframe by clicking I. Then let's go to frame 40 and let's move the mouse up and let's add a keyframe here. This is where it will end up after we change the origin point. All right, let's add some animation. First, let's put the mouse in a nice starting position. I think we could move it 90 degrees on the z-axis, then minus 90 degrees on the x-axis, so it's pointing up. Actually, let's turn it around 180 degrees, so we'd see it like this. I think that's good. And on frame zero, add a keyframe, then go to frame 40. Let's move it up and add a new keyframe. Now we have an animation of the mouse going up. So what we're going to do is to make the mouse jump up in the air, and on the way up, while it's around here, it will morph into the skateboard. If you play the animation now, it looks pretty basic. It's just sliding up in the air. And we can also, you see here on the zero line, all the keyframes here are kind of keyframes that are not moving. So we can delete all this. So we only have the Z axis keyframes left. And while having this selected, let's make it more snappy. So go into this one. Let's choose individual centers. And if you scale now, it will scale the keyframes individually. So let's scale this up. And this will basically make it more snappy. So if you play now, it will start slow and then boom, go faster up. And in animation, we have something called anticipation, which is kind of a small movement you do before doing a big movement. And in this case, we could select this first keyframe, rotate it a little bit down to make the mouse go down a little bit before it jumps up. So if you look at this now, it's kind of looking like it's getting ready to jump right before it's jumping. That's nice. Let's also do something similar here for the end. We could rotate this like this. The problem is that then it will end very harshly. You see like when it stops here, it will just like come to an instant stop. So let's control Z this and let's duplicate this keyframe by clicking Shift D and let's move it to the side here. Let's scale this one down. And now let's rotate this keyframe a little bit. Select this handle. Let's move this down. Now it will have kind of a nice landing. And I think we can work a little bit more on this. Maybe we can keep this flat like this and move it up. I think that's good. Now it's like going up and stopping. Going up and stopping. And I want this to be even more snappier. So let's select these two last keyframes. Let's move them to the left. And now it's very snappy and it's stopping. We can probably make it move this one a little bit like this. This handle a little bit to the right. 
just so we find the perfect amount of snappiness we want. Because we don't want it to be too staggering of a move. We want it to be snappy, but still kind of you, you should be able to see the whole movement. I think this is good. Maybe a little bit. All right, perfect. Nice. Now we have a simple jump movement here. So let's save this. So the most important thing to think about when we're making a morph like this is that we have to figure out where we're going to do the morph. And in this case, right when it's moving the fastest, which is right about here, where you see the line being very steep, it's where it's moving the fastest. So yeah, we will basically do the morphing in this steep part. But before we do this, let's add some squash and stretch. And squash and stretch is something we use in animation to kind of exaggerate movement by changing the shape of what we are animating. And in this case, it should basically be normal size here and the fast rate moves. We should make it a little bit thinner and a little bit longer. So it's kind of getting stretched. And then when it reaches the top, we can make it a little bit wider and then become the normal shape again at the end. So before we do this, let's add a keyframe on all of these keyframes. Let's also add one at the beginning here when it's right before it's starting to move up. And let's move to this fastest section. Here we can make sure we have a bounding box center here. Uh, here we can scale it down a little bit so it's thinner. Let's also make it a little bit longer Add a keyframe. And if you look at this, you can see that it's it kind of feels like it's almost like slimy the way it moves like this. But I think it's kind of too intense right now. We can make this a little bit more subtle. And actually, I think we could select all the keyframes and make them a little bit smaller because we want it to be snappy. I think that's good. And now if you search for scale here, we can filter out only the scaling keyframes. And we have to work on these curves to make it fit the jumping animation. So to make it really feel that he's jumping up right before he jumps, we can make it more wider and a little bit smaller like this. It will feel like it's preparing to jump by like crunching together. And we want to show that the mouse is releasing all that energy in one single jump. So to do that, we have these keyframes where he becomes thinner. Let's move this all the way right after when he's at the thickest. And this will give, this will kind of make it feel like he's pushing all this energy out to jump. And I also see that we can work on the set location a little bit. So this is the set location where he jumps up. I think this is a little bit too slow at the start right now. So what we could do is to rotate this down a little bit. And I think this is better. Let's also go into the scaling. I think we can make the squash and stretch a little bit less intense. So when you have normalized enabled, you can just select all the keyframes you want to make less intense and make sure the pivot point is sent to bounding box center. And if you now scale in the uh, Y axis, sort of up and down axis, it will kind of like make it closer to the baseline by scaling this down. Or we can make it more intense by scaling this up. So let's scale it a little bit down like this, maybe a little bit up again. I think that's good. And now we also want it to return to the normal shape at the end. So we could also scale this one a little bit up. So it's kind of like going from being at the thickest to shooting up, becoming thinner. Then at the very top, it's becoming a little bit thicker again and then returning to its normal shape at the end here. I think that's good. Of course, depends on the personality you want to give your animation. You don't have to put in this kind of squash and stretch, but I think it helps a lot when you're doing squash and stretching. If you look at the animation I did before, you can see that I did a lot of squash and stretching. Here it's a bit more extreme. You see the moisturizer getting almost squashed down there, jumping up. If you look closely, here, the moisturizer is very thin. It lands at the bottom, gets squashed, so it's like very wide, and then shoots up. And because we're expecting it to get thinner, we don't really realize that it's actually changing into this bottle. So if you look at this in fast motion, it feels very smooth because the motion that is happening is kind of what our brain is expecting, even though we're making a big change, which is changing the entire model. And this is kind of a similar thing we're going to do with our animation, where the mouse is getting squashed, jumping up and then changing into a skateboard at the top here. All right, perfect. Now let's enable the skateboard too. And for this, before we do anything, let's make sure this origin point is at the center of the skateboard. So keep this selected, go into set origin and let's choose origin to center of mass. Now it will rotate correctly. Let's also make sure the wheels are parented to the board with keep transform. We can also delete this empty. I see it's very big now, so let's just scale this down. All right, nice. And let's match this up with the mouse. Let's put it right here. 
think this looks good. And let's parent this to the mouse. Now we have both the objects doing the same motion. So what we want now is to make sure it changes from the mouse to the skateboard where it moves the fastest. So let's go to the Z location. And as we looked at before, that is here on frame 11 or 12. I think both of them could work. Let's do 11. And at this point, we want to disable the mouse. So an easy way to do this is just to go to the frame before on 10, hover over this icon. If it's not visible, you can enable it here. Make sure both the screen icon and camera is enabled. Then hover over both of these and click I to add a keyframe and do the same with the board. We have to do this with all the objects. And for the board, we can disable it here and add a keyframe on top. Make sure it's yellow, not orange. Then go to the next frame. Let's disable the mouse, add a keyframe and enable the board and add keyframes here. And if you click play now, you can see it's changing into the skateboard. And it feels almost natural because they're doing the same motion and our brain is expecting it to do this motion, but we're changing the entire model here. And you see, this is a very staggering change, but when we play it, it feels much more smooth because it's happening really fast, but we can make it a little bit more smoother. So let's go all the way to where it's changing. And a big thing we see is that the skateboard is much taller than the mouse. So make sure the skateboard is selected. Let's go to the last frame of the animation, which in our case is frame 31. Let's add a keyframe here by clicking I, and then let's go back to frame 11, which is where the skateboard is appearing. And let's scale it down in the Z axis a little bit. Add a keyframe. If you go back and forth now, this is a little bit closer. We can also move the skateboard down a little bit like this. Now you see they're almost the same position and size. And we could also work a little bit more on this by making the mouse a little bit thinner. So let's select these keyframes, make sure normalize is on and scale in the Y axis like this. And let's switch between them. Now they're almost the same. I think this is good enough. And if we click play now, the transition is almost perfect. And something more we could do is that it looks a little bit weird at the end here when the skateboard is doing all of this wobbly motion. So to fix this, let's move this scaling a little bit closer. I also see a small thing we could change with this transition is that we should move the skateboard a little bit up, maybe like this. And because we're expecting the mouse to move up on the next frame. So it's important that the skateboard is a little bit above it, maybe even further, maybe like this, because then you see it's changing like this. I think that's better. And let's also work on the wobbling animation here at the end. It looks a little bit weird. I think it's because we have the animation on the mouse. So let's select the mouse, search for scale, and let's just remove these keyframes, which is this part. And I think this looks a little bit smoother and we could also move this keyframe more to the left and let's scale it up a little bit, maybe like this. And now we have a pretty nice morphing animation, but we can do one more thing to make this look a little bit more natural, which is to animate the camera. So let's make sure the camera is selected. Let's add a keyframe by clicking I at frame zero and let's go to the frame where it's about to jump. Here we can move the camera a little bit down. You can do this by clicking R x and then x again then you can move it up and down like this so let's move it down a little bit add a keyframe yeah make sure normalize is enabled and then wait until it goes up all the way which is around frame 18 let's select the camera again click r x x again and let's rotate it up like this then let's add a new keyframe so now it's kind of following the motion here but it doesn't look very natural because it feels like it's perfectly following the objects. So what I like to do is to select all the keyframes and move it forward one or two frames. Let's do two frames so that there's a slight delay to the camera motion. And what this does is to make the camera motion feel a little bit more human because a human can't follow motions perfectly and will always be a little bit delayed. I think this looks good. And maybe this rotation is too intense. So let's scale this down and we can also move these keyframes at the end further back here. Let's scale them up. And that's basically how you make a morph transition in Blender without using any modifiers or add-ons. It's very simple and you can also add more layers to this, like you could add rotation if you want. And the moment it rotates, it changes into a skateboard, for example. Good job getting through the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe and I will post more like this in the future. All right, thanks for watching.